Ah, you're here. I have a crypt I'd like you to look at. Again, I'm not finding any usage cases for columnar transposition. William Friedman and Helen Gaines do mention it in their writings as early as the 1930s. What is more clearly understood is that columnar transposition was used for double transposition to harden substitution ciphers by the Germans in 1914 and the Dutch resistance, the French and the British in World War II. The German World War I ADFGX cipher used a columnar transposition step as well. On that note, I'll meet you in the training room. Columnar transposition actually takes two forms, complete and incomplete, based on whether the message can be written into a complete rectangle or not, usually with a width greater than two. If it can, it's complete, otherwise, it's incomplete. The decryption steps for the two variants are slightly different, so they're generally treated as two separate cipher types. In this video, we'll focus on complete columnar. The width of our rectangle will depend on the length of our message. If necessary, or if desired, we can add X's or other null letters for padding. I want to show two example messages here. So we'll first take the plain text, this is a test message. It is 18 letters long, giving us a 3 by 6 box for a width of 3. Next, we'll add a null at the beginning and end of the text, like this. X, this is a test message, X. The message is now 20 letters long, which can give us a 4 by 5 box and a width of 4. I'll show how columnar works for both examples. Once we know the width of the rectangle, we need to pick our key. For columnar, we want a number from 1 to our width in the desired order, without repeating digits. For the width of 3, I'll pick 312, and for width 4, I'll use 4132. Write the plain texts in rows under our keys. For key 312, we have THI, SIS, ATE, STM, ESS, AGE. For key 4132, we have XTHI, SISA, TEST, MESS, AGEX. Read the text off in columns in ascending key digit order. For 123 order for width 3, we have HITTSG, ISEMSE, TSASEA. In 1234 order for width 4, we have T I E E G, I A T S X, H S S S E, X S T M A. Group the texts in fives and we're done. For width 3, that gives us H I T T S, G I S E M, S E T S A, S E A. And for width 4, it's already in groups of 5, we don't have to change anything. Next, decryption. For decryption, one method is to group the text in column lengths, write out the key, and write each column under its corresponding key digit. Then read the plain text off in rows. For width 3, we had H-I-T-T-S, G-I-S-E-M, S-E-T-S-A-S-E-A. With a width of 18 divided by 3, that gives us column lengths of 6. So in our key, under 1, we have H-I-T-T-S-G. Under 2 in the key, we have I-S-E-M-S-E. -S -E. And for 3 in the key, we have T-S-A-S-E-A. -S -E Reading the message off in rows, T-H-I. S-I-S-A-T-E-S-T-M-E-S-S-A-G-E, -S -S -E -E, we get, this is a test message. Adding the word breaks back in, this is a test message. A second method, which I generally prefer, is to regroup the text in column lengths as above, but just treat the groups as segments or rows, and put them in row order as given by the key. Then, read the plain text off in columns. For width 4, our message was 20 letters long, divided by 4, that gives us a length of 5 for each segment. 
We put segment one next to one in our key. That was T-I-E-E-G. For segment two, we put that next to two in our key. That gives us I-A-T-S-X. We put segment three next to three in our key, H-S-S-S-E. And we put segment four next to four in our key, X-S-T-M-A. We read this off in columns, and that gives us X-T-H-I-S-I-S-A-T-E-S-T-M-E-S-S-A-G-E-X. With word breaks and removing the nulls, we have this as a test message. The black chamber will generally use message lengths of the key width times 7 to 16 rows deep. One last nicety, an easy way to generate key numbers. Rather than trying to remember a random number, we can pick a keyword and write down the alphabetic order of the letters to create our key number. If the keyword has duplicated letters, we can increment the key digit going from left to right for the repeats. This method can be used for any cipher type that employs key numbers. Examples. Cat. A is 1, C is 2, T is 3. Gives us the key number 213. Cats. A is 1, C is 2, S is 3, T is 4. Gives us the key number 2143. Scatters. A is 1, C is 2, E is 3, R is 4. The first S to the left is 5. The last S is 6. For T, the first T to the left is 7, and the second T is 8. Note, we can use tricks if the key number needs more than 9 digits. For 10 digits specifically, 0 can act as 0 or 10. That is, numbering can go from 0 to 9, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, or 1 to 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 0. If we need more than 10 digits, we can use whatever makes the most sense. That could be to switch to hex, 0 through 9, A through F, switch to the full alphabet, upper and or lower case, or use software programming techniques. One example of a software technique is to treat the key number as a list of numerics. Key num equals the list 2, 45, 17, 0, etc. As long as the sender and receiver of the message agree on the system, anything is possible. Taking this back to complete columnar, if we use the keyword transposition, we'll have a key number with 13 digits. B eight zero three nine seven five A one C two six four. We could tell the receiver we're using that number, which is harder to remember, so they're going to write it down somewhere, or that we're using transposition, and let them figure out how to handle the decryption phase. That is, it's up to the receiver to decide whether to convert the keyword to B803975A1C264 or 8039 to the list 11803975101264. Doesn't matter. Whatever is most convenient. The black chamber will use both key numbers and keywords as it sees fit. If you want to try your hand at solving complete columnar transposition, I pinned a few practice scripts in the comments below. If you want to see some methods for solving complete columnar ciphers, you can join the Black Chamber on Patreon to get access to the next video when it comes out, or wait until it goes public on YouTube sometime later. Link in the description. That's enough for now. See you at the next drop point. Got questions, comments, or suggestions? Leave them in the comments below enjoyed this video, then I encourage you to hit the like button and subscribe to this channel. If you want to show further support, you can join us over at the Black Chamber Patreon page, where you can get access to more how-to videos and PDFs on solving the cipher types covered here, additional crypts to solve, and more. Links pinned in the comments below. See you at the next drop point.